Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on, man? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, just chilling. Yep. Chilling, yeah. had a good week. You went out, you, you had like a little, kind of like a reunion. Not, I mean, it's sort of a reunion? No, no, there's a, our high school does a uh, fundraiser every year okay. for uh, steak, lobster fry, and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you, so you had steak? Uh, no, I had the lobster. You didn't get both? Nope. Why? Because yeah, I just wanted the lobster. And Why? I bought a ticket for lobster. Why? So, they didn't have the option of two? Well, yeah, you had to buy two, though. I'm not going to buy two tickets. Like Didn't you win like six hundred dollars while you were there? Uh, the group, the collective group of us. Oh, okay, so it wasn't just you. No, no, no. There was oh, eight okay. of us. There all was right, eight right, of us. Right, right. That's good then. Yeah, yeah. I know. So it's it's the kind of dinner where there's some sort of raffle or something. There's a few of them. Okay. Like, I mean, uh, there was a twenty five thousand. Uh, oh. They they only sell a, a thousand tickets, and you win twenty five thousand. All right. Uh, we didn't win that. No. Good. No, good. Yeah. No, yeah, we won 600 and You'd be so annoying if you won 25000 Why would I be annoying? Because you'd be like, ain't no big deal. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Are> you kidding <laughs> me? You'd be like, all right, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, no, we won and then just hung out, got to see friends and stuff from, from back in the day. Yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah, it's cool. Sounds like, sounds like it was a good time. Well, listen. Um, how, you, how was your week? How was your week? Because uh, I haven't seen you. In, you, saw, it, you saw, it's been a rough week. I, oh, yeah. We haven't even we haven't I, even. I connected. should probably tell you what happened. Wait, what? What happened? Yeah. So Can you talk about this now? Yeah, I can talk about it now. All right. No, I'm gonna feel bad uh, if this is actually really All right, here's what happened. I'm not now prepared this, for this. This is just for everybody knows, okay? Everybody knows. This is how honest we are. We are honest. I'm learning even, this for the first even, time right now. The, even to my own detriment. In fact, I Somebody asked me that the day that this happened, somebody like a, a person, a lady in a bank, she goes, how's your day going, sir? And I was like, this is a terrible day. I said, globally, like big picture, like I'm having a wonderful life. It's a great mm-hmm. day. But for my, in my own little life, this is a terrible day. And uh, when I tell my friends uh, what happened, they're all going to make fun of me for weeks. And she goes, well, why would you tell them? And I said, because it's true. And that's, that's I got to be real. I'm about to hear this, guys. I've right. not heard this yet. All right. So I had a, I had a, I had a big day planned. All okay. right. I, uh, this would have been, I think, Thursday. I don't really remember. It doesn't matter. Um, so I, I got up uh, and I left the house early. Okay. Um, I was going to drive away from everybody, uh, get out to a cigar shop far away because I needed to get a lot done and okay. I didn't want to be distracted. Of course. Then I had to come back for meetings. That's when I had this big meeting with a Skype call yep, about yep, a yep. project we're working on yep. for Doctrine and Devotion. I had do- uh, church meetings, all this stuff. So I had to be on the ball. So I got up. I hit the gas station because my car was on E. Mm-hmm. And, of um, course. And uh, <laughs> I uh, so I went. I, I put the – what do you do? Put the nozzle in the tank, whatever. So I put that in there. Clipped it. Whoosh, so it's, whoosh, it's running through the gas. Then I run. I do the windows you know, because yeah. I got to clean my windows because the inside is all covered in like – Cigar film, tar. Cigar tar. But So I have to at least clean the outside. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I can see a little bit. So I do that. I come back around. The gas thing is done and it says $34. So I put it back. Um, I hop in the car and I go. And so I get way out into a different city and um, my car dies. Now, you know, it's an 07. And uh, I thought, oh, you got to be kidding me. So um, I, I I try to start. It starts up and it dies again. And I thought, well, it could run out of gas, but I put gas in. I filled it up. Yeah, $34. Right? So, $34. So I don't I, – I, I'm like, it's a gas, fuel pump. Could I don't know. So um, I'm like – and I did notice that it did say E – Halfway there. I did notice my gas tank still red E, but I left my car running because it was hot out and I wanted the air conditioning to continue to run while I was filling it up. Right. And you're not supposed to do that, but continue. Okay, whatever. I do my own thing. So, <laughs> well, your own thing seems yeah. to have failed you. Continue. Okay. So, and I thought, well, maybe it didn't reset the car because I didn't turn it off. Whatever. It didn't reset so, the you know, car. It didn't reset the little gauge. Some cars actually do function that way. So, like, it won't register that it's different unless you shut the car off and turn it back on. That the gas gauge has been done. okay. You can okay. Google it later. My mechanic actually told me that that's the case. So, anyways, but that was my thought when mm. I had. I well, maybe it's probably. So uh, I got to call a tow truck, and uh, and they got to take it to uh, a, a garage again. Then, um, so they're doing that, and now it's got to got to wait all day because they can't get it in. They got appointments, so they finally get it in uh, at the end of the day. And, uh, and they, if you read the little printout, they give you a little printout. Yep. And it said, uh, tow in, uh, uh, died, uh, hooked it up to the machine, uh, no codes were found, put $5 worth of gas in, it started. 
<laughs> yeah, so apparently, uh, I don't remember this happening, but apparently what happened was I forgot to put my card in the uh, gas uh, tank. What do we call it? The gas? What do you call it? The, I, I went to the gas. What do you pump? Gas pump. I didn't put my card in there. I took off the handle. I put the gas in. I clicked it, and I went onto my thing. So when I came back, it said the last guy. The last guy that did it. I hung up and left. And uh, so I ran out of gas. I lost the whole day. I got it was yeah, dude. So ultimately, I wow. ran out of gas. I just I ran out of gas. Wow, Joe. and I had to get towed. And then I had to pay one hundred and ten dollars for them to put five dollars worth of gas in it. That's not even counting the tow. <laughs> That's not counting the tow. So let's get this straight. Yeah. Instead of paying thirty five dollars in gas, mm-hmm. you spent thirty five dollars in gas plus how much was the tow? Well, I didn't spend thirty five dollars. No, just how much was the tow? Oh, I didn't even look. I don't want to look at that. How about this? Let's just, okay. One hundred fifty bucks for the tow. Probably a hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay, so you spent two hundred sixty dollars. I would say something like that. Two sixty plus. You, plus, then you still had to refill that gas tank. Okay, so the, uh, the first thirty four I never spent. I know that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You spent the thirty four on the back end because you didn't do it on the front end. Yeah, I did. I did. So, fill it up so afterwards. instead of just paying yeah. thirty five, you, you know, did, nobody cares. You did. Nobody. Eight, cares. No, they do. Two six. Yeah. So three hundred dollars. And then I had to hear about it from my CG for like an hour, where like Pastor Brian's like. Dude, I told you a month ago to get like insurance so that you get free toes. It's like thirty dollars a year, and you would just have a free toe every time, as opposed to the the, the, the two six you just yeah, spent. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, it's been a rough week. That, oh, wow. Um, yeah, that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, dude. Well, that's not as bad. You like you like. I missed the I missed the Skype call. Oh, whatever. Now, now, dude, oh, I actually dude. thought it was a lot worse. Oh, I, I thought it was a lot worse. This is worse because it, it shows that I'm a dummy. That's what I don't like. But I've already known that. Yeah. But so that's no, why but now, not... now you have more evidence. I don't like it. <laughs> I have you all the evidence. You can say I'm a dummy and I'm not, <laughs> I don't like... care, but you can prove it now. <laughs> so, all right. So... Listen, why are we here? Ultimately, we're not here to talk about me being a dummy. Yeah. But you know what though? But you know, as a dummy though, you mm-hmm. need help. I, I don't, who could possibly help me in my current state? I don't know that anybody could possibly help me. Oh, Tyler can <sighs> over at myxp. Myxp.church. That's it. Oh my gosh. Myxp could help me. In fact, myxp has helped me before it was officially myxp. Tyler has helped me and has helped Redeemer yep. solve some of our problems as we were growing from a very small church to a mid-sized church. That's right. Um, and so Tyler is is the guy that you want to talk to, uh, and the, and Tyler and Ryan Hughley who run MyXP. Well, basically, what MyXP is is um, it is the it is a company that will be your virtual executive pastor. Yep. And so um, we're going to share more details with you later on today in the episode. But um, check out myxp.church for the, the full breakdown of information. But what you need in your church, if you don't have an executive pastor, is you need somebody to function in a pastoral role who can solve immediate technical um, uh, logistic and communication problems for you mm-hmm. in a biblical way. That's it. And that's where uh, my XP and Tyler Drevitz comes in. So, Joe, what are we going to be talking about today? Okay, we actually threw up the mics because uh, we just wanted to uh, – we've tried to get to this. We've just been um, – Well, some of us couldn't get there. Yeah, we've been blocked. Yeah, I well, know. well, I'm just thinking some people, uh, their car died on yeah, the way. Yeah, and it, this, you know, it didn't die. You know, It just got tired. It got tired. <laughs> it <just laughs> ran out of gas. <laughs> we wanted- how, many, how many times in the last two years has that car been in the shop? Uh, it's a used car. I know, but how many times? Just I roughly. Don't I don't know. Four. Having four? Yeah. Yeah. Every six months. Okay. That Can we do this now? Because I got to go. I got stuff to do. I'm, oh, taking, yeah. I'm taking Catherine to the... Catherine to what? T- Taylor Swift conference. Oh, conference? Whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> Concert? Concert? Are you guys going to be able to make it? Yeah. Do you need $35 for gas? Uh, I need some towing. Can I just, can <laughs> so I just, can a tow truck just give me a ride there? It might be cheaper. <laughs> All right. Let's talk. We're going to talk about, going. we're going to talk about the state of the SBC. Um, in light of, uh, Who's running for president yep. and the controversy and all this stuff going on. We just wanted to once again talk about the nature, the state of the Southern Baptist Convention from our perspective and the right um, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, the right from a reformed Baptist perspective. Um, and, and just we want to encourage you guys, our listeners. Um, and by you guys, I mean you men and women. Oh, boys thank and you. Girls. Good job, Joe. Good job. Um, it's a northern expression, you guys. Mm-hmm. Right. It's gender neutral. Like the, hey, like, you guys. Like the NIV. All right. So, uh, when we're talking about the SBC, we're mm-hmm. talking about a, a cooperative effort among yep. Baptists, right? It started in 1845. Mm-hmm. And, and we appreciate all your work in that. Continue. Well, yeah, it was, uh, 
I, I wasn't. I would not have been a part of it because I was from up here. Anyways, uh, it, actually, the start of it in 1845. It, it was a it was a controversial rocky start because the reason the Southern Baptist Convention was formed was because the big triennial convention of Baptists were not down with sending land uh, slave owners uh, into the mission field. <laughs> so hmm. they were like, "Nah, dude, you got to work that stuff out." So they said, "Listen, we we're up, we want to reach people with the gospel. We want to you know make converts and, and just a, just a missions emphasis." Yeah, yeah. So uh, and we don't think owning slaves is a problem. So that that was their perspective. So in one sense, you can say the SBC started over the issue of missions, which is how many Southern Baptists will put it. Yeah. But in another sense, uh, the SBC was started over the issue of slavery yeah. because uh, the slave owners uh, wanted the, to be able to be slave owners and still go into – And preach the gospel program. at the same time. All right. So Rocky Start, obviously, but mm-hmm. it has from the very beginning always had a missions emphasis. There's yeah. been a missions evangelism emphasis from the very beginning and from the very beginning – uh, you know, or at least at the very beginning, they were uh, Calvinists. They were Reformed Baptists. Every single church that was represented in, in 1845, uh, when the SBC was formed, every single church used the 1689 or its equivalent uh, as its confession of faith. So um, that demonstrates where these churches were mm-hmm. aligned theologically. Uh, it's not just that Calvinism was has always been a part of the SBC. Calvinism was. Uh, the dominant theological perspective in the SBC at its um, beginning formation, right? right? Yeah, I mean, well, also, you know, the tent has broadened over the years. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's just gotten kind of bigger and bigger to incorporate just more ex- not expression is not the right word, right? Like, I'm not talking about well, like more diversity, the, more diversity, of, I think, is the right way to put it. And right? really, that happened. Uh, we see that happening, right? When, um, like, really at turn of the century, uh, so it didn't take very long, but by 1920s. This guy E. Y. Mullins became the president of Southern mm-hmm. Seminary, um, and this is when uh, there began to be a drift away from Reformed theology into a a less Calvinistic, more broadly Baptist evangelical uh, theology. So uh, as the tent broadened, like the convention expanded, yeah, convention expands. But then here's the problem, or not? Well, yeah, here's one of the 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 issues that came up was just more of a theological drift in leadership. When you've got a, a larger tent right. with more diverse views, then it's going to start to kind of there are, there is going to be a bit of a sway. Right? You got to we got to watch that. And yeah. so what happened was like you can see this happening in the 60s and in the 70s, uh you know, Baptists are always behind the ball, so we hadn't gone full liberal uh, by the time other major denominations had, but we were drifting in that way. That's right. And in the 60s, we you could see it in the 70s that while the, your average Southern Baptist was a conservative Bible believing Christian, many in leadership at the time, uh, in the convention, at the seminaries and at the institutional level, the convention level, they were embracing a more liberal idea of, of Christianity, whether, whether it's regarding the inerrancy of scripture or, uh, the exclusivity of salvation in Jesus and things like that. And so this theological drift created a crisis oh, yeah. in the minds of a lot of people because, um, wow, the leadership was not representative of where not only where the rest of the convention is, but yeah. more importantly, what the Bible teaches. Exactly. So then you had individuals, I mean, such as Dr. Patterson. Paige Patterson, Paul Pressler. Uh, there's a bunch of people that were bunch involved. A bunch of people that, that kind of uh, led the charge for the conservative resurgence within right. the SBC. Right. And so that this, you know, this was a political move. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. It was it was a political move because we're talking about um, taking over the leadership of a, a religious organization and taking it in another direction than it was currently heading in. So it's a political move. It doesn't mean it's a bad move. It's just a mm-hmm. political move. And um, but it was a political move that was aiming to right theological wrongs. Yes. And so I'm happy that there was a conservative resurgence. Uh, in the um, in the SBC that happened in the late seventies, mid seventies. Yeah, um, I think. But it's but let me let me just say this. Like, okay. So there was this conservative resurgence, which meant and so what is it? What did it look like? It meant that um, Paige Patterson and all these guys who were serious about the Bible uh, being the Word of God and inerrancy and missions and all that, um, they got everybody to show up from churches to vote in new leadership yeah. at an annual convention. They got everybody like, you got to come here. You got to vote. We're going to get these liberal people out. We're going to get conservatives in. And that is what they did. That's what they did. Um, and from there, they were able to then begin to appoint people in different positions of leadership throughout the convention, which is why the SBC now is a, a strong and evangelical conservative Baptist denomination. 
But you know, it's one of the th- one of the one of the uh, things that have come come up since then, Joe. I mean, I mean, maybe maybe I mean I haven't been SBC all my life, so it, I feel awkward saying something yeah, like neither this. Neither have I. So go ahead. But it, it sometimes though, when people have power and when they're in those positions of authorities, and people have been through war, you know, a theological yeah. war. Mm-hmm. Uh, it becomes kind of this good old boys club. Yeah. I think you're always going to have that, that, that danger, right? Yeah. You, you know, you've got people that have, you know, uh, were sweating and bleeding together, yeah. uh, metaphorically, or, well, not the sweating. They were, these, these were big guys. They were sweating. They were sweating uh, already. Yeah. But, uh, Mom spaghetti. And, um, <laughs> they were forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, uh, but yeah, they're definitely, be- there, there began to develop a, 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 a good old boy mentality yeah. among, not just among those who, um, were the originators and the architects of the conservative resurgence, but those who supported them. Um, and so you, you can kind of sense that that was one of the issues that has continued to rear its head, even in recent times, you know, we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that we began to see pretty clearly is, uh, easy believism. Um, yeah. And false conversions. Oh, yeah. And this is something that – in fact, I'm going to say it this way. The only people that have really ever cared about what I'm about to point out uh, that I've been able to see are Calvinists in the SBC. When it comes to the SBC numbers, the only people that I've ever heard make any hay about the, this discrepancy are the Calvinists. And they've been saying this since the late 80s. Now, they may have been saying it before that, but I know that they've been saying it since the late 80s because I've read stuff from the late 80s from the Calvinists in the convention about this issue. And so it was generally touted, um, you know, 16 million members uh, in our Baptist churches, but we can only find 6 million in services on a Sunday. Well, and that was actually just what happened, uh, the, the last report. Yeah. This last one that's coming up ahead of this convention was like 15 million members, mm-hmm. uh, 5 million church attenders. Yeah. <laughs> 3 million in Bible study. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I, I get you're going to have less in Bible study than you are at church. Yeah, yeah. But if you've got 15 million members of churches, but you can only find 5 million of them on Sunday, what does that mean? Well, that, some of them, some of them have died, and they haven't been cleaned died, off the roles. And that's just it. Oh, I wonder okay. a large part of it. How many of it is is membership roles, just bloated roles? Well, it's definitely bloated roles, but they're bloated for different reasons. One of the reasons they're bloated is easy believism. Yeah, because uh, the Southern Baptists, you know, for well, you know, for a, for decades now, have had uh, a terrible practice of. Just like, hey, man, if you want to you want to follow Jesus, pray this prayer, meet it in your heart, and mm. now you're a Christian, which is a terrible way to approach evangelism and conversion. And um, and it has led to a bunch of people praying a prayer, being counted as uh, as a person, getting baptized quickly, yep. being made a member of the church, but there's no discipleship, there's no follow up, and they're just disappeared. And they're gone. All right. So like this is this is a problem that uh, that the Reformed. Baptists in the convention have been trying to address for a long time. So the fact that the Southern Baptist Convention is shrinking, right? It's on a downward trajectory for yes. the first time, uh, you know, ever. Uh, it started maybe five years ago or so, maybe 10 years. It started to be a decline. So membership is declining. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, that's okay. I'm okay with membership declining yeah. because it's not even reflective of who we really have in church. But yeah, we want to see church attendance go up. Yeah, so that's what I'd like to know. And in conversions fact, go up. Yeah, that's, that, that, it looked to me like church attendance was up even though uh, at that thing that uh, Jared Wilson put up. It oh, looked yeah. to me like attendance was up and, and membership was down. That's a trajectory I can be okay with. Um, but I, I don't really know. So – we have uh, we have this problem of we've had this problem of false conversions and easy believism for some time, and that needs to change. We need to take not just evangelism seriously; we need to take conversion seriously. That's right, and so that's where good theology comes in. Um, but it's not all been bad, right? Uh, the International Mission Board, yeah, of the SBC, has been good. It's really good. They're yeah. doing great work. Uh, North American Mission Board, it, it's getting a lot better. Yeah, it's it, they're doing really good work now. For a while, I just and I told a lot of those guys in leadership, like it's weak. You guys need to make some changes. Um, not that I had the answers, but I could just see as a NAM person um, that there was a lot that needed to change. Disaster relief, good stuff. Yeah, they, 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 we have a. They are they, they they made a couple mistakes in the past. <laughs> they wouldn't receive and use the water that Anheuser Busch wanted to give them one time uh, because Be- yeah, because it was yeah from maybe, a beer company. Yeah, even though it's just water. Yeah, but it's, it had Anheuser Busch on it, so. I, 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 when people are thirsty, people are thirsty. Yeah, exactly, man. And, and you know what? And if all you have is beer, give them beer. Yeah, like, yeah there's water care. in beer. There's plenty. There's enough. <laughs> it's only five percent alcohol. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> so, um, so but disaster is really good. The ERLC, oh, fantastic. Russ Moore, Russ Moore is killing it. Bada bam. Mm. Seminaries, 
Some are good. Some are some are on the upward. Yeah, yeah. man. Some are doing yeah. all right. Yeah, man. We got uh, southern, southeastern, midwestern. Those yep. are good. Like them yep. a lot. Yep. Yep. Um, Midwest. Yeah, you said midwestern. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not missing. All right. So, what, all that to say, when we're talking about the SBC today, right now, you've gotten a little little tiny bit of of history. We got some links to in mm-hmm. the show notes for you guys to read uh, on the history of the SBC. But uh, right now, we're in a crisis. Oh yeah. And you can see it. Uh, kind of, you can see the crisis manifest itself in these different ways. Like these different things are happening, right? What are Absolutely. some of the things that you're seeing that that where you go, whoa, there's a problem in the SBC right now? What are well, some of the things? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm I'm seeing is uh, there's a lot of young church planters that aren't getting the help that they need. That is a problem. That's a problem, and mm-hmm. I I do I, I do know a way of remedy that. How to remedy that, Joe? More money to them from. The convention, or utilizing the finances they have and and grabbing on to my XP with Tyler Drevitz. That's it. That guy's it's, awesome. That man is a problem solver. He's got uh he's got expertise in bookkeeping, people management, systems, guest uh, connection, all that stuff. He knows when to hold them, and he knows when, when, when to, to fold, fold them. them. <laughs> so he knows when to hold on to a ministry and when to fold the ministry. That's not what. <laughs> but I was in a poker rep. Stop. I, I know you're trying to script. stick to the script. Stick to the script. I'm just saying. You sometimes you have to make those decisions, Joe. That's right. You we're, better have we're, a good in the, we're in the midst of that. Right. They need to learn when to hold on to a ministry and when to fold that ministry. We're just horrible at it. What are we folding? Well, we're not folding it. Oh, okay. But I, I want to. What? I don't want to talk about it out here. Oh, okay. You know. What are we talking about? Well, we'll just wait when I, we have to deal with Pat. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> But no, you gotta head on over, uh, to myxp.church. Uh, and you know what? Listen, if you go and check out their website and schedule the free initial connect through August, you will receive 30% off the first month if you mention the D and D podcast. Great thing about myxp is not only is, uh, Pastor Tyler gonna help you think through your current problems, where you wanna go, your goals, how you can strategically hit those things from a biblical perspective that is, that is also efficient and smart. Um, all of that. Uh, you do, you don't have to sign up for like a year. You can do a month. You oh, can yeah, do three yeah. months. You can do whatever you want. Exactly. Like, whatever like, the, whatever your needs are. Tyler wants to help you be That's more it. effective as a church in yep. making disciples. And, uh, Tyler and Ryan, uh, the guys behind my XP are great pastors. We love them and respect them. And you, if you don't have an XP, if you're a small growing church, yep. or if you're a large church and you just don't have an XP, if you need help, this is a place to go. This is it. And now's the time to do it so you can start getting ready for the fall kickoff uh, for your church. All right. So in terms of the crises that yeah. we have in the convention, what are some symptoms? Like what, do you, what are some things that you see happening in general? Well, I think one of them would be kind of this this divide, this this uh, like schism, this mm-hmm. – uh, oh, wait. Hold on. We call it church multiplication. Never mind. Yeah, but not really. You know what I mean, though. Yeah. Like, you know, when people get upset with each other, they, they begin to divide the church. Right. They get upset and they go replant. They take a, you know, take half the people or a quarter of the people. Usually, you know, they try to target the, uh, the givers and then. Yeah. And it's like, we've got, um, we've got this happening at the church level, but it's also happening in the convention level, right? They've got yeah. people that are, that are constantly trying to, um, make controversy and and make people choose sides in a very divisive way divisive yeah and divisive and when the, the people visible. are um trying to be divisive, divisive. they uh and i'll just give you an example okay so we've got traditionalists and we've got uh calvinists yeah and then there's people in between and all yeah, that, yeah. right but these are two groups in the sbc now of course the traditionalists are uh you know the relatively new group um who have, they would disagree with yeah, you but, okay, yes. but they are and um they got those i don't know those a handful of people that actually believe their crazy uh, confessional statement. But um, so we, we, there's room for non-Calvinists and Calvinists in the SBC. Oh, yeah. And we should actually all be able to get along and be cool. It should be chill. No problem. Let's just do our thing. Who cares? But there is increasing tension. Now, from my perspective, what I see are uh, you know some really angry and self-righteous traditionalists. That's not all of them. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying some of them, like Rick Patrick, um, who have said horrible, yeah. evil things oh, yeah. uh, about brothers in Christ oh, yeah. and, and creating even, this division. I, so, And it doesn't mean it doesn't happen from the Calvinist side. Of course no, it I'm does. No, I'm thinking, I mean, look at BJ Smalls. That guy's, yeah, you know. There you go. Another one. Now, uh, and they're leaving the SBC. Thank oh, goodness. goodness. So, Bye, Felicia. So, so there you got two extreme ends, right? You yeah. Got, you, you, got, you got PJ Small and you've got Rick Patrick. And these are guys that have done, have said horrible things and have created unnecessary, uh, friction among different groups that should be able to be friends. Oh, absolutely. So I do think that's a really good one. There's schism. Uh, The jealousy. 
Yeah, there's definitely a, there's a there's a weird kind of jealousy about who's going to be in this role and who's not going to be in this role. There's well, and I mean, I mean, it's, it's part of it though, Joe. I mean, you mentioned at the beginning about uh, the when we we're talking about the conservative resurgence about mm-hmm. the political nature of it, right? And I and I think sometimes because of the political nature of things, uh, jealousy comes into play. People want to be in a position of of authority or what they what they perceive as a position of influence and mm-hmm. and status. Well, yeah, and I and I I think that's true. And in fact, it's interesting that guys like Rick Patrick and and some of the traditionalists have been really honest and they'll say, "Listen, we don't like how many Calvinists or at least people that they perceive to be Calvinists are in positions of influence in the SBC." Yeah. And they say, "I don't like it because that's not representative of most SBCers." Whereas my response would be the, the the most important thing is that we get the most qualified people into positions of leadership. Yeah. And so if they're Calvinist, cool. If they're not Calvinist, I don't care. Yeah. What I do care about is, are they going to do a really good job? Are they going to follow the Lord, be faithful? Um, but so, so some people are definitely um, jealous. jealous. Yeah. I think that, you know, when you look at the crisis, you can't help but think about the moral failures. Yeah. We've got a ton of people that are, that are being busted for everything from having affairs to, um, you know, just behaving in, in such a uh, non-Christian way that they've got to lose their position. Um, we've got moral failure happening at a, at, at a not at just a, at a high rate, but at a, at a at public alarm. level. Yeah, it's just alarming. I mean, you hate to see it to happen to to one, right? But the level and, and the amount that we're seeing now uh, in the is, SBC, in the SBC specifically, Calvinist and non-Calvinist, this is is, is quite uh, alarming. It's been frustrating, dude. There's been the misogyny. Misogyny is a, a big one, which is not uh, something new. You know, that's it's not like acupuncture and misogyny. It's uh, it's it's not massage. Oh, it's uh, I can't believe mis- misogyny you is. <laughs> you feel so proud. Oh, right that's now, a pretty good you. one. That was um, <laughs> what you said. Acupuncture. I'm like, oh no. So, <laughs> if you, misogyny is is, is is a hatred of women, and of course, you know, I, I know most most people in the SBC don't hate women, Mm-mm. but there has been um, uh, within the SBC. Uh, not not all over, but within the SBC, there has clearly been a problem with a degrading of women, yes. a dismissive yep. attitude toward women, a demeaning uh, approach toward women, uh, a lack of care and protection for women. Uh, so that is definitely something that is a problem that needs to be addressed. It's oh, yeah. it's a part of the crisis that's happening in the SBC. And, and then, but it also leads then to uh, abuse cover up. Yeah. Right. Whether it's it, well, I mean, I'm thinking of sexual abuse. I'm thinking of, uh, physical abuse. Right. I mean, just, uh, just covering, uh, and then even, uh, abuse of power. Yeah. Let's go with that one. Right. Um, I mean, just it, it leads to trying to because people want to keep that position of authority because they want to keep that position of influence because they don't want to be, uh, embarrassed and I guess publicly rebuked. Yeah. You know, they, they try to go to great lengths to cover it up. Yeah. But look, um, this, this is not all about Paige Patterson. No, in no, 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 no. That is one symptom, right? That, uh, that we have, right? There's, there's, that's just one example. Um, and we're talking, I mean, this relates to sovereign grace ministries yep, and that yep. whole abuse, um, allegation still being cover covered up, up thing. Yeah, we've got, um, we got which, this. which, hold on, I, I, which I want to say to our, our Calvinist friends who are cheering with pay, you know, that page is, you know, yeah, uh, oh, okay, great. say it. Yeah, uh, why, why aren't you, uh, w- what about sovereign grace? You want to put page on blast, but well, not, uh, not, but not your grace? friends, huh? huh? Yeah, I mean, that, that yeah. to me is, that to me is the hypocrisy, uh, uh that we're talking about here, yeah. Yeah. right? You can't sit there and, and, you know, look down your nose at, at Dr. Patterson and, uh, alleged whatever's going on there right yeah. and not put your eye on sovereign grace and so, eh, well, let's deal with that let's deal with that and we've been eh, it's just for years for yeah. years and we're still not dealing with it right so like this all of this like the, so the crisis that we're talking about and this is what this is how jimmy and i see it these are all symptoms right the schism the jealousy the moral failures the misogyny the abuse cover up all that stuff it all boils down to leadership yes there is a leadership crisis in our convention, there's a leadership crisis in the church. This is why we put so much emphasis at Redeemer on the issue of leadership, yeah. and it's why it's such a burden to us in our teaching and our preaching outside of our own local church. There is a leadership problem. Um, there's a lack of transparency. There's a lack of yeah. accountability. Um, there is a lack of integrity. And so 
the, if we're if we're saying like, listen, I love the SBC. I want the SBC to be used of God uh, and, and all the way until Jesus comes back. But um, if the if the SBC is going to be healthy, if we're if we are going to actually participate and be useful, um, what should we do? Like what what are some things that you know that we've talked about mm-hmm. that um, we ought to emphasize yeah. in our interactions with uh, within the SBC? Yeah, I mean, I think we need to hold leaders accountable. We need yeah. to hold people accountable for for what they've said and what they've done and and for what they haven't done to protect right. the the defenseless, right? Absolutely. Like we need to we need we do need to hold people accountable. We they do need to be uh removed, you know what I mean? And and yeah, I mean I I just I don't understand yeah. this whole cover up thing. I don't I, I you know what to a degree I get it. I get it because uh my own my flesh yeah. says I don't I I wouldn't want to be out there. Yeah. Getting nailed like that. Of course, of you course. Know. No, it doesn't mean that we don't understand why it, it's there, exactly. it's, but it's frustrating. Um, and it's particularly frustrating because it's like, it's like, listen, uh, I'm a pretty easygoing guy and I'm a, I feel like I'm a pretty forgiving guy. Uh, but if you're hurting someone or taking advantage of someone, yeah. uh, then we got a problem. Exactly. We got a real problem. And so I, I, I get that. Um, I, so I agree. I think we need to be willing to hold leaders accountable, even when it's scary. It, Cause it's easy to hold leaders accountable if you don't like them. Oh yeah. Right. But, but say, listen, I'm going to do this, even though this is scary, this might cost me, but I am going to do this. I mean, this is why so many people are in trouble at harvest uh, Oh yeah, yeah because yeah. like there are people that w- will say like, I'm going to say the right, I'm going to hold you accountable uh, to the leadership there. And then they get like blacklisted. They, yeah. they get in big, major fallout for them. So we got to be willing to hold leaders accountable, even when it's going, even when it's scary, even when it's going to hurt us. Oh yeah. When it's going to uh, cost so, us. So that means like at, you know this convention if you and I could be there we would be there. Oh yeah, like, absolutely. this is we are providentially hindered from being at the convention, you know, uh I mean cuz even you know the SBC won't won't let me be or let me be me. So, so let, let me, me see. see. They, they tried, tried to, to shut, shut me down, down on, on MTV yeah. or SBC. Or they tried SBC. to shut me down on SBC, but, but it, it feels, feels so empty, empty without, without me. me. Something like that. Yeah. Something like so that. anyways, <laughs> We're so dumb. Oh my okay, gosh, we, we are just, we're ridiculous. Right. So I love that you knew where I was going. That's my favorite part. Um, well, it also shows our sinfulness. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I don't know who that was. I, I don't know. know. I don't know. Um, Something Steve McCoy was listening to. So holding leaders accountable means that we're going to have to speak up. Um, but a part of this does mean that you got to be involved in the convention. Yeah. You can't just you sit there and complain like, oh, I hate the convention. I've been to tons of conventions, uh, SBC conventions. Um, you, you can't just complain about what's going on and then not be involved. You got to go there. So here, here, here's, here's what's next. Here's a piece of advice. Go get ready, get signed up as a messenger from your church if you're a Southern Baptist and go to the SBC convention in, I think it's in Dallas, right? It's in Dallas. In, yep. in, so sign up and go there. And when you get there, what should they do? You know what? I'll, I'll throw it out there. Vote for JD. Oh, wait. JD Smalls? <laughs> That's the one. Oh. JD Greer. <laughs> oh, Greer. I was going to say, don't vote for that JD. If you vote for that JD, I'm going to come and punch you. <laughs> Right in the thigh. That's about as – that's my straight in the thigh cross. Right there. My, my, is, my, is right in your thigh. Um, yeah, vote for J.D. Greer. Oh, does, yeah. That's not because Ken Hemphill, the other guy who's running, is a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. Um, but J.D. is the kind of guy that I want to see in oh, the yeah. convention. Um, godly dude, growing church, healthy church, uh, good theology, good heart, um, doing a lot of great stuff, man. Uh, and again, I want to see a new generation of leadership step up. So I, I want to agree with that. So participate, vote for J.D. Greer. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, I would say – one of the things that I'm thinking of is not only do we hold leaders accountable when we want to participate in the convention, mm-hmm. um, but just make sure that your life is bound up in Jesus yeah. and in your local church yeah. more than it is the convention. Absolutely. So I think be involved in the convention, take it seriously. Very important. Yep. But if that's your life, if that's your emphasis, if that's your thing, to the detriment of the local church, it, there's, there's a, it, there, 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 probably a problem there. Yeah. Now, some people are called to a higher level of investment yeah. in the convention. That's fine. Yeah, but apparently from, we're not. But continue. No, 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 no. no, no. They, they, well, not ain't nobody that. got time for that. And no uh, one's asking for that. Yeah, no. They, uh, <laughs> listen, the last thing I want to do is do anything other than what I'm doing right now. Oh yes, I'm sure, thing. Joe. Yes, yes. Uh, like, it is. I, 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 no, I'm just saying they, they never they never invite us. Why are we blacklisted? Why are we black? Why is it blacklisted too? Because you use that hey, phrase. SBC. Uh, you, you, oh my oh, they invented blacklisted. Oh, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! But why are we? Why are we shunned? 
Why are we shunned? We're not shunned. Oh, come on now. How are we shunned? We don't get invited nowhere. Who gets invited to anything, though? Not us. And and not most other Baptist pastors. Yeah, but you know what, though? But there's other pastors out there that are, you know, come on. Why are you so hungry to be invited to something? You know what? Because I think we have something to offer and uh, some advice to give. Otherwise, all you get is page, page, page. Yeah. You know See? what? It's time to turn the page. It's time to turn the page. <laughs> oh, we got a t-shirt. Oh, a t-shirt my gosh. Idea. That was good. <laughs> that, that right Write there that was down. golden. Got turn. turn the page. <laughs> turn the page. All right. So really what we're saying is, um, listen, uh, be serious and be intentional about your group, your tribe, mm-hmm. and recognize that really your people is the people of God. Those are your people. Yes. So it's, it's trans-denominational, interdenominational. And then outside of that, recognize that your people – are the human race. Like we are, we are together, right? So, um, we, we want to recognize that at the, at the big level, like of just like your neighbors, but as the church, your true people, your true family are other brothers and sisters. Yeah. So wherever you have those circles of influence and unity and responsibility, be involved, be invested, hold your leaders accountable, be willing to serve, be willing to speak, um, participate, but also just make sure that, uh, that you are living for the glory of God. Yeah, like, good that, point. That's your aim good point. in all of these things. Because, um, you know, if you're living for the glory of your convention or if you're living for uh, your own glory. Glory uh, your platform. You know, it's uh, it's going to go bad. We've seen it happen in the SBC. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, and, and you know what? Let us know how it goes at the convention. If you're there, please, you know. Oh, I'm going to watch that us. thing live. I'm going to be all over it. You're going to watch it live? Yeah. We're going to live tweet it? Well, I don't know about that. You're thinking about it? No. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo. I'm texting right now. We should do it. At Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, DoctrineDevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, JoeFoStore.com, and grab some gear. Uh, big thanks to Tyler over at MyXP for sponsoring today's podcast. Fresh Pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog huh? posts on Wednesdays. Video did, content on... Did you what? wait? Did you say who? I wasn't listening. Did you talk about our sponsor? We already did that. Yeah, you did, but you, you, I did it again. Uh, okay. All right. And you tell him about the store. I told the him about Joe the store. store. I told him about the store. Are All you? Right. Su- no, I, I wasn't. I was. I was texting. Go. Later. Did you wait? Nope. Later. Okay. Bye.